Someone who's been here before, welcome to you and thank you for coming back. Today it's like a little bit of a story time type thing. It's about a new hire car, dual carriageway, and a sale that I had on eBay that went completely wrong. And um, first of all, just want to say, excuse the terrible lighting. It's uh, Saturday afternoon. It's so grey outside, and I'm in my dining room. Hence, I'm super bright at the moment, and if you hear any grunting, that's my dog Frankie down there. <laughs> so it's not my stomach. And I just like to mention, I did have a bit of Botox the other week. For the, I thought I'd try and have a bit of Botox to lift that bit up, and it left some strange lines, <laughs> strange lines on my head. And I can't even have a fringe because I've got this cow's lip thing there. So yeah, so I'm hoping that will get better. I'll make you see it. I really hope that gets better because that's looked well weird <laughs> so anyway I just wanted to mention that because any of you looking at me and you're like what's going on with red so I just thought I'd mention that get the elephant out elephant in the room uh, mentioned so that's that so, <laughs> so right so where do I start with this story this um is how you know the way some people do weekly um a day a week in the life of what they've done but I can't really do that because when I come home from work it's late I'm tired I've got no makeup on and it's not a good look so nobody really wants to see that that I just spat a bit then sorry so I've, I don't think I'd ever do one when I come home from work but this is just a video of what what has happened over this week so I start at the beginning because the beginning of this will follow on to make you understand why this parcel if you see my instagram you'll know what this is about why this parcel got lost we well, didn't get lost i know where it went but why well, i'm mislaid it for a little bit it went on a little journey <laughs> you know, i know so a couple of weeks ago like i said this is it will it will all you will understand it in the end it all will join in in fact i'm I'm going to get Liam to come as well and talk. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to go and look at some sheds in West Brom. I don't like going on motorways. I've never been a motorway driver or just driving fast or anything. So Liam, whenever we go somewhere, to be fair, Liam's always driving and I'm normally a passenger. Because I love being a passenger. Because you can get to nose in people's houses, especially in the night time when they leave their curtains open. You can have a little nosy, can't you? So I'm always a passenger. So Liam's, Liam was driving, Sully was in the front, I was in the back and then we comes to an island, we come off the motorway, comes to an island and then I realised Liam should have gone left, the, um, the sat nav did say but we both got a bit confused and in fairness to Liam he did look, he indicated but unfortunately this car coming round, yeah on the other left, left the left next to us, he basically he was, looked like he was trying to jump the lights and of course Liam went to turn left and bumped straight into him we all got out of the car and we apologised to the guy and everything, really sorry. <laughs> it was our fault. I mean, I've got got it on my dash cam and everything. So it was, it was okay. The bloke was fine about it. So got exchanged all our details and everything. So arranged the hire car, found the insurance company. They said the hire car was coming. And Friday, true to the word, two guys pulled up. They phoned me up in the morning and I was here within 10 minutes because they said they didn't realise how close we were, I was. So within 10 minutes they came round with this car, this brand new car. Well, I didn't realise it was brand new at the time. They just pulled up, took my car off. It was very quick, actually. They didn't look round my car or anything. They didn't show me anything about this other car. What was it? It was a Vauxhall. I'm going to put the name of it here because it is a car I've never seen before. It was quite sporty, nice little car, actually. I'm going to put the name of it here because I think it... When I got in the car later on to go shopping, it was a brand new car, it was like 66 miles on the clock and they don't even put mats in. So anyway, goes in this car. Liam didn't want to drive this car because he says if he bumps it, he'll never hear the last of it. So I'm the driver, which is weird, me being the driver and Liam being the passenger. So he goes shopping. So ever such a strange car compared to my one, our one, I should say, not mine. 
I want pretty nippy, although it's a bigger, older car. But this one, I don't know if it's because it's new or whether this is it's all eco-friendly stuff. It was quite hard to pull off. The first gear was quite stiff. When it learned, yeah. the car, little limbs just walked in. I'm just telling them about the car. It didn't seem to have as much power as our car. Because it's a smaller engine. How do we know that? I don't think, Liam says if you've been driving as long as Liam, he knows these things apparently. Although I've been driving longer than Liam, you know, hey? You're a woman, I'm a woman. So, <laughs> nice <laughs> sexist remark off Liam there. Eh? <laughs> Strike a blow for feminism. Anyway, so because I'm a woman, I didn't realise this. But it was a nice little car actually, but it just didn't have, didn't seem to have no power. Pulling up was so a bit... Bit like you know when you just pull off and you're like, mm. <laughs> you know, nice little car. So went shopping, come back, farm. We didn't go in it again to the next day. I was going to visit my sister in the hospital, the Alex in Redditch. I've only been there once before, so I wasn't quite sure I was going the right way. So we used a sat nav. So get there, fine. Sinna, she's had a new part knee, new part knee, knee cap thingy. Like anyway. So while I'm at the hospital, I get two messages from a buyer about these boots. Right, and when I say these boots, I'm hopefully you should be seeing a, a screenshot just there. Now I bought these boots a while ago from a car boot. They only cost me a fiver. But when I got them home, they smelled really bad of damp. And the, um, with the tongue bit was quite yellowish. So I managed to clean them, took me ages to clean them, tried to buy carb on them and everything. Just couldn't seem to get rid of the smell. So I didn't put them on eBay for ages because I just thought these are just asking for a, a negative feedback. So the other week I just thought, you know what, sod it, I'm going to put them on. Somebody else had a pair for sale, I think nearly £60. I'm going to put them on and say that they, they smell a bit damp and they've got yellow, yellow staining or something. But just be honest because I want to get some money back. So I put them up for forty nine ninety nine, which was a lot less than the other, well not a lot less, but it was less than the other person had them up for, but they've had them up for our sale for ages, for longer than the time that I've had them. So basically, somebody sent me a message while I was at the hospital saying, um, I think it was, are they, a, see they're a size 5, are they a small size 5 or are they a large size 5 and a few other comments like that and I'm like, send a message back because I'm a size 6 so I, I wouldn't have a clue. So I sent him a message back, really sorry, I cannot tell you if they're big or small. But then they bought them straight away after that. So I thought, you know, one of them went, why, why would you buy a pair of boots if you're not even sure they're going to fit? Are they planning to return them? But I just thought, give them the benefit of doubt because some people don't return stuff that I oh, can't never be bothered to return stuff. I'd rather give it away or redone out or, or sell it. I normally sell so straight back on if they don't fit me, but that's just me, like, cause not everybody bothered selling stuff. Anyway, so got that message off the lady. Then we left. No, I was a bit annoyed with the hospital actually. It goes to pay for the car parking. It was four pound 50, which like I said before, if I was prime minister, that would be the first thing I'd scrap parking at hospitals because it, it's disgusting it's cheaper to go shopping than it is to visit somebody in hospital so shame on the people who do that but anyway yeah when i went to pay it was four pound fifty and i only had three pound change on me and it didn't take cards but fortunately two young girls were behind us and they told us where the card machine um cash machine was so we got the cash so anyway that was basically <laughs> the trip to the hospital so then we come out at the hospital car park and this is where Liam's going to come and tell you what happened next so I'm going to so this is Liam <laughs> and we just want to tell you about what happened when we went on the dual carriageway do we know the name of the road no no Liam mate has got paint on him because you've been painting the ceiling yeah yeah you've got paint there nice. okay up for that. yeah so Basically, we come out of the hospital, didn't we? Come out of the hospital and it was nice and light. Well, not light, but there was like light, so it was bright. And wasn't there lights on the dashboard? Yeah. Yeah, the lights were on the dashboard. So, I pulled out the car park. So, why didn't you want to drive the car? Because it's a brand new car and you know what you like. You'd be like, well, what's this, what's this, what's that, what's that? And 
What did you say that? What? Do I do that? Yeah, all the time. You move out, can't you do that? <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> Liam didn't want to drive the car because it was a brand new car. And I would do that a lot to him. And what else do I do? No, she doesn't do that. What you do, you're driving down the road and there's a car indicating to say he wants to get in your lane. So you can see the car and you think, right, okay, he wants to come in the lane, but obviously he's got to wait. And she'll, oh, what's his car, what's his car? And you're like, Jesus Christ, that's all I can see. <laughs> well, I'd just like to make you aware of other cars. So I was driving the car, comes out the hospital car park. Goes on the one dual carriageway, which has got loads of lights, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the other dual carriageway, for some reason, hasn't got any lights at all. So as I'm suddenly driving, <laughs> I suddenly realise it's like pitch black. <laughs> so it's literally black. And I've panicked a little bit in eye. Yeah. I panicked because how fast was I going? About I was going 50. quite was I? Yeah. About faster. So I'm going about 50 down this dual carriageway, which is pitch black. And I can't see in front of me at all. And the lights were on the dashboard, so that's why we were confused. Yeah, the little side light, the LED lights on, didn't you? Yeah, but we didn't know that till afterwards. <laughs> so I'm driving in the dark, bricking it. I didn't want to pull over because I couldn't see the side. Of, you couldn't see the side oh. either, so it wasn't just me. I couldn't see the side of the road. And because it's a new car, I thought if I do try and pull over and I bump a curb and damage the car, they're going to charge us. So we're going down this dual carriageway. Because I just... Yeah. Tell me about your driving style. <laughs> Are you supposed to drive tentative? Donna drives tentative like that, really up close to the window, really sensible, don't you? Yeah, but how many bumps have I had? <laughs> how many? I've had none. Well, the Audi, you went into the Audi. I did. You did. And you blamed that place for it. <laughs> yeah, so anybody who watched one of the videos will know that the bloke in the Audi drove into me and then Liam thought he'd get his back on the Audi. <laughs> Into another yeah, you told me to turn left. <laughs> so anyway, so I forgot what was the on about now. Drove down dual carriageway, no lights, and you couldn't find the lights. Yeah. So and he was bricking it. Yeah, and he was taking the piss all the way. Change your underwear yet? Stop funny clothes, son. Yeah. So anyway, eventually we made it home in one piece. No, no thanks to the blokes who never even showed us where the lights were, did they? No. And it, we couldn't. We struggled afterwards when we got home. We eventually found the lights. They were like underneath, <laughs> on the right hand side, a button down below. So, yeah, so. A it was quite scary, to be fair, driving down the dual carriageway. Cars was in past you and you ain't got no lights on. Yeah. And you yeah. don't know where they are. Yeah. Well, scary. Yeah, it was a bit. It's it was funny, funny though. It was funny for me because I was a passenger, so it was quite entertaining watching you yeah. panic. <laughs> yeah, so the moral of these stories when you get into a new car, I'm sure most people know this, but just in case you don't. Probably best to check out where all the lights and the indicators and all that sort of stuff is in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It always helps. So Liam's just came in to verify uh, the car, the driving. What no, so what Donna's taking <laughs> it easy, chatting to you lot on the internet, L Liam's on YouTube. On, yeah, but she's who, cracking a whip on me. Who's going to finish it off though? Probably me. No. Who does all the finishing touches? Me. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> no, I do all the painting. You only do ceiling. Just all the painting. I've got paint all over me. Look at the. Well, so this is an old paint top. It's telling me this. No, he's always like this. Really. Yeah. <laughs> all right then. So Liam's gonna finish going upstairs. And... Oh, is that more cute to crack on? Yeah, crack okay. up. So this is Liam, by the way. <laughs> Did I introduce you? Yeah, yes. anyway, so Liam's going to do some more work and I'll finish the video and the, the story. Because you were good, weren't you? You taught me to get that parcel. Yes. Yes, you did. From the <laughs> island that we had the crash on. Yeah, but didn't I treat you to a, um, a fry -off? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't cook it, but we bought it. So Liam's going to carry on and I'll carry on with the rest of this story time. So say bye-bye, Liam. Bye-bye, Liam. <laughs> <laughs> See you in a bit. No, Liam. <laughs> morning right i packed this parcel up this parcel again i'll show you packs it up puts it in the boot of this hire car thought right on the way home like we normally do if i've got parcels that need to be posted i only had one which was that one because obviously i'm a super duper top rated seller not i am actually top rated which is weird because i have my sell bugger also <laughs> i don't know anyway so i had one item to post so it was about half ten and I'm at work and my phone rings and it's a hire car company and it says, oh, not the hire car, the guy, I don't know who it was, but basically they phoned to say my car was fixed, 
they can bring it back now. And I'm like, but I'm at work. And I said, OK, give us the address. We'll come there. And within half an hour, uh, one of the lads from work was outside and he called me to say, oh, Cooper, your car's here. Like, you know, so just to get my car and the bloke's sitting in my car, which is weird seeing somebody else sitting in your car. And uh, basically, he gets out, like, that's my feet on the floor. I'm not, I'm not breaking wind, that's my feet. So he gets out of my car and we're just having a general chit chat, being polite, like, you know. And he didn't look around my car or the hire car at all. He was just basically chatting about the building where I work and how big it was. And, and I was telling him at this point, somebody else from work had came out and that they wanted me for something. Also, he's a nosy old bugger. So I'm thinking he needed me for something, but also is I'm a nosy guest. So like he came out and we, he was waiting there and he could hear this conversation. And I said to the bloke, I told him all this place uh, that sold the building, be, we'll be moving soon to West Brom. And he said, that's where we're based. So bear in mind this West Brom thing, like, you know. So he told us, told me that's where they were based. So I thought, oh, they must, obviously that's where they come from, West Brom. So I didn't think nothing of it. So he gave me my, he says, where do you want me to park your car? So I said, don't leave it there. I said, as soon as you move the hire car, I'll nip into that space. So I didn't think nothing of it. I was over the moon for his limb. I said, you know what? We got our car back already. Bloody hell, that was proper quick. Like, you know, the, whether it's just a bumper change because it's a bumper that was all scuffed and the light. So I suppose that's just a quick swap over, isn't it? And it's spotless as well. <laughs> give it a good clean because it was proper mingy. So they give it a good clean and I didn't think nothing of it until about three o'clock. I'm at my desk working away because obviously I'm a grafter. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. And then all of a sudden, I just thought, I've left my parcel in the boot. And you know, when just panic, I panicked, like, you know, all reason went out my head. I, I just thought, what? Oh, no, my parcel, my parcel, panic, panic, panic. So I phones him up, tells him, I says, I've left my parcel in your hire car. And then he says, hang on, I'll put you on hold. So he says, you came about five minutes out. He says, I've got your parcel, it was in the boot of the car. So the bloke never checked the hire car. I mean, I remember last time I had a hire car, they went round with it like, all right, like I'd done something to it, probably inspected it, but this bloke just got in the car and went. So if he had inspected it, he would have opened the boot and seen me pass on, I would have remembered, like, but obviously that didn't happen. So of course I'm like, what am I going to do? He says, well, if one of the guys are in your area, they can drop it off, but we don't know when that's going to be. So I says, what time are you open to? Well, but he said half five, then he said five, then half five. And he, it's like he didn't know what time they were open to. So I just thought, OK, I'll just stick to five. And then I just thought, I need to get it today. Why I didn't think about getting it Friday on my day but I just thought, I need to get it. I need my parcel. Oh, the woman's paid. I've got to get it. So I went and asked if I can leave early. Now, bear in mind, I work in a factory, which is like old school type thing, where I, people, if you don't turn into work, you don't get paid. It's just just the way it's always been the same so I left work two hours early to try and find the parcel plate so when the bloke gave me the postcode when I put it in my sat nav I didn't actually check the actual area I just put the postcode in you're right there's Liam so I just put the postcode in my phone and just started to head off and then it was taking me now bear in mind the guy said West Brom, which I thought would have been the left turning. The sat nav told me to go right. So it took me down like St Paul Square and then onto Queensway. And then next thing I knew, I was on Aston Expressway. And I'm like thinking, this is the opposite direction than, than West Brom. But it did keep telling me to turn left and take the motorway. Now, well, I, said, I don't do motorway, so I refused to turn left. <laughs> I just wasn't going down the motorway. So I ended up getting off and in Erdington and then had to turn round to get back to myself to try and get to the jewellery quarter. So I thought if I get to the jewellery quarter, at least I kind of know where I am. And I'm sure West Brom is by the jewellery quarter. So when I get there, the sat nav's like redir redirecting me, but it's taking me up Hansworth way. And I looked at the time and I just thought, I'm not I'm not going to make it in time for the place anyway so basically I just ended up giving up and then going back to pick Liam up from work so when I get home I emails the buyer briefly explaining what's happened basically I've left you 
or something that I can't and I can't get it till Thursday please can you set the cancellation because I thought not Thursday Friday because I thought imagine if I get there and they've lost it although they said they're gonna put my name on which they did actually did I thought I didn't want to take the risk of getting a late shipment and all that sort of stuff so in fairness she was good she accepted the cancellation no problem and then I says I'll let you know and then she was saying again after she accepted it the next day she was like can I repay you for the shoes and then when they when you get them send them to me and I'm kind of like no can you please wait till I actually get them and then as soon as I get them I'll let you know and then relist them and you can repurchase them which I thought seemed to me pretty reasonable now don't get me wrong about this buyer she seemed a lovely lady but I ended up having like about 31 messages from the woman which like I said to Liam, I don't think in all the years me and Liam have been together, he sent me that many messages, like, you know, I've, I've never had so many messages of one lady, all nice, I'm not saying any of them were horrible. She was extremely, uh, she took it quite well, the fact that I'd lost her boots, <laughs> you know, so that was that. And then on the Friday, we goes to get them, it was wasn't West Brom it was Wensbury which is by West Brom so as we're traveling there we're by the island and uh, I, I realized we were by the island where we'd had the little bump and then I thought oh well, really? we can have a look at the sheds so anyway it goes to this hire car place and they did add the parcel and Ben as I put my name on it and everything they got it straight away from me so I'm like ah, thank you very much so we went to look at the sheds, which turned out not to be a shed place. It was just where they make the sheds. So they hadn't got a showroom. So that was, would have been a, well, it was a wasted journey before. So, you know, when I then went, bloody hell, it was, it was a right rough area where it was as well. I like, had all cars all everywhere, all smashed up cars, which was a bit weird. So anyway, when we come, oh, I can't talk. I'm trying to remember what happened then. Yeah, I sent her a message to say, I've got the shoes, got the boots, not the shoes, I've got my boots, are you still interested in him buying them? If not, no worries, I'll just relist them. Sent me a message back saying she was in the hairdressers and she hadn't got access to, I can't remember what she said, was it PayPal or eBay or something? And I'm like, that's fine, just let me know when you're free. If you still want them, let me know and I'll relist them. But I made a point of saying, it doesn't matter if you don't want them, I'll just relist them, I'm not that fussed, like, you know, because I've got to admit, the fact that she was asking questions about the sizes made me sort of think, this. I don't think this sale's going to go well, <laughs> like, you know, try and go with my gut. But anyway, we was in Asda when I was getting messages from her saying, she's on the phone to PayPal. And I, I was trying to get the internet for some reason I couldn't get the internet until we gone up to the other floor because it's like the basement bit like you know so I, when I actually read it she was on the phone to PayPal trying to pay me through PayPal no and I'm like I don't understand why why are you on the phone to PayPal I haven't even released them yet so I sent a big message just saying no just let me re if you want them I'll release them give you the item number and then you know go from there you so she I, Eventually, I really see them, sent her the item number, which I think she found it before I sent it her anyway. And she bought them again and said it wouldn't accept her offer of uh, the £40 again. So, you know, when you can reply with an offer. So I sent her the air again, the £40 offer. She pays for them, got the kitchens, everything's fine. So we gets in there as a car park, grabs it out the boot, just about to take a photo of the, um, the label. Because obviously it's going to be a different label. So I thought I'll take a photo of it so I can get the uh, tracking number and everything copy. And then I get, I've looked at my phone and there's two more messages from this lady. The first one saying about the smell. What would I use to get rid of the smell? And how yellow are they? And do you think there'll be a dry cleaners that can get rid of the yellow tinge? As she never, this was not um, on the original listing. And I'm like, well, it was because I, I just relisted it. I didn't update nothing. I just relisted it. And then, like I said, there was two messages, both sent within seconds of each other. Then the next one asking if she could offer 30, after she's already paid, if she could offer 30 pounds, because that's what everybody else has got unlisted for. And I'm like, one, correct me if I'm wrong, if you think I overreacted. The description was exactly the same. I I described every single fault 
she'd already got £10 off the order and then she's asking for a reduction after she was saying the, the staining, the smelling, she wasn't sure about the size and then she wants another £10 off. Like I said, so I've seen somebody selling these for nearly £60 but I put mine lower because of them faults on them plus I wanted to get rid of them and I thought well why are you asking for a reduction after you've already paid for them? Like I said, I know she was very polite and everything, but I just thought alarm bells started to kick off then. I just thought, there's something's not right here. This just isn't right. So I just sent her a message. I think this cancel this transaction is going to be cancelled. So I, I actually said that to her. I do not want to go with through with this transaction, as now you're asking for a reduction. Now, I know I messed up. I left them in the boot of the car, but the way I see it, I know this wasn't her problem, it was my problem. I left them in the boot of the car. I lost two hours work, two hours wages trying to get them. I get them, I'm messaging her and she's sending me millions of messages. Then she's querying the condition of them and the price after she's already paid. And I thought, she's going to return them. You can see it coming a mile off. Maybe I'm being over paranoid or something, but I just thought, I don't want to deal with you anymore. I've just had enough. And she sent, she did send me a message saying, how did you put it? I, not that I'm out of order, but I was very, very unfair. She told me I was very unfair as this was my mistake, which, yeah, it was my mistake. So I just thought, right, when I get home, I need to go on and cancel that label, the shipping label, because that cost me over £6. But eBay's website, I find very unuser friendly, so I couldn't find ship links pay, um, on my transactions. I couldn't find the postage labels anywhere. So I contacted eBay and the girl, fortunately I got through to the Irish girl. I don't, um, I don't, I like it when the Irish people answer because I like the Irish accent, <laughs> you know. So she taught me through how to, how to you have to go onto ship links, I mean website, and then put in the reference number. And I mentioned about this buyer. And I says, um, how do I block her? Because I can't even remember how to block buyers, or, you know, because it's been that long since I've done any bit. And she done that, she said, I've done it now for you. So I managed to block the buyer, or so I thought, and I put in a request to cancel this label. So I don't know how long that would take. And then on the night I was out, and I get another message from this buyer again, saying she was forced to cancel the transaction or something. And I'm just like, uh, I just thought, to be honest, I thought once you block someone, maybe it's just blocking, blocking them from buying from you again, I don't know. Or whether she managed to sneak this message in before she got blocked and I just didn't notice. I don't know. Bit of a puzzle, really. It's like, God, I am proper bright in here, and I was <laughs> glary, shiny. So that was what happened with this parcel. So now um, I'm going to relist it again. So if anybody wants a pair of Timberland boots that have been on a little tour, <laughs> um, they're a little bit yellow and they're a little bit smelly. If anyone who wants to buy them, check out my eBay page because they'll be up for sale pretty soon. And please don't return them if you do buy them because I've just had enough of them. Because any more grief from these, they're going straight to the charity shop because I've had enough of them now bloody things but all I wanted to ask you is if you're an eBay seller or an Amazon seller or whatever would you have gone through with the transaction like I say I don't mean to have a bitch about the buyer she was actually very very polite do you know what I mean I can't knock her she was never rude to me at all she I just thought the excessive messages got a little bit too much I've never had that many messages ever before it just seemed to be constant constant message 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 so i'm not knocking her at all she was very polite but if you was me if somebody first sent you messages ask querying the sizes and then later on querying the condition and then asking if they can offer less after they've bought them would you be a bit suspicious because i certainly was would you i don't know it's it's an awkward one in it oh uh, I could have just posted them to her, but I just had a horrible feeling they were just coming straight back to me. <laughs> so I'm expecting a, a negative feedback, which she's entitled to leave me, I suppose. That's her choice. 
to start to take it on the chin when I <laughs> so thank you all for watching everybody if you've stuck stuck to the end <laughs> you know that was my not story time I don't know what you could call it that's basically what happened this week in eBay land <laughs> in eBay and work and hire car and my lack of driving skills and that sort of stuff so if you want to leave a comment down below that would be brilliant thank you to everybody who does leave comments thank you and thank you to everyone who's watching gives a thumbs up and just takes the time to watch <laughs> you know. i better go now it's gone really dark isn't it it is really dark and you hear frank snoring it'd be great being a dog wouldn't it sleep eat and fart that's all they do isn't it? <laughs> you know thank you all for watching have a great rest of the weekend, although it's a bit rubbish here, so I hope it's better where you are. So I'm looking straight at myself, which is weird, because I, I'm conscious of them lines. That's so weird. That can't be right, can it? But I'm going to see the lady the week after next. She said she just wants to have a look and maybe a top up. But I'm not 100% sure I'm a... I'm not having a knock again. I'm not knocking the lady. She, she does a good job on the crow's feet. I think that just to me because I'm not used to it. It just looks a bit odd. So thank you all for watching. Thank you to everyone who subscribed. If you want to give this video a thumbs up, that'd be great. If you don't want to give it a thumbs up, that's fine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. That's fine. But to the people who give me a thumbs down, have a nice day, you lot. <laughs> Why do they do that? Why do people give you a thumbs down? Just don't watch the video. You don't need to leave a thumbs down. But if you feel the need to leave a thumbs down, that's your decision. But thank you again. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.